Bienvenue dans ma cuisine. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Yvonne Gro from Laurel Creek Inn and Vineyard, and we're in Archkiss, Colorado. Today we're going to uh, emphasize on the uh, festivity of Christmas. Usually, we in France we have the Bûche de Noël, which is the Yule, uh, the Yule log. We're going to switch to something more a little more simple and uh, also a dish that my guests at the end this summer have requested recipe and uh, I want to share this with me with uh, uh, the color of Christmas uh, to emphasize the festivity of, of the holidays. It is a puff pastry with uh, whipped cream and we're going to use kiwi and raspberries just uh, to have those three colors, the snow with chantilly, the red raspberry and the green with kiwi. So uh, we're going to introduce the uh, ingredients. The ingredient that we need for the puff pastry and the fresh fruit is I have this product here that come in two sheets in the package so what you could do is today we're going to use one sheet and which is here I took it off the freezer about 20 minutes ago so it's nice and soft we need two spoon of two tablespoon of flowers that's going to be to work the, the pastry uh, the puff pastry the sugar is for the uh, chantilly the whipped cream uh, then a little bit of nappage, which is just a plain uh, apricot jam that we're going to reduce with a little bit of water and it's going to give a nice shiny look at the finished product. We're going to use today the raspberry, the kiwi. So raspberry, it's about six ounces, uh, two kiwis, the one egg for the pastry, uh, the pastry shelf when we cook it we'll just brush the pastry and uh, give it a nice uh, finished look to work the pastry the puff pastry and uh, it's coming out of the freezer that probably 20 minutes half hour and it did really thaw very well so sometime you might have so if you're going to use the whole sheet, you might have to push those little edges here. You can put some water too, but this doesn't look too bad. But today, we're using just a few, uh, three uh, sheets of these, uh, of this puff pastry. And we're going to... Do two tarts. I'll show you the finished product of the tart. So that's what we we are trying to do um, with those three. We're going to do two of those. What we do first is cut in the middle and do two bands that we're going to put in each pastry sheets. Uh, also, of course, you know, I, I, I could do the, this puff pastry from scratch, which is, takes quite a long time, but it's, you know, if you have, the best thing is you use great butter, but this is, this works pretty well. Those then on the side of each plate here, and to glue them, you just had a little bit of water along the edge and uh, be a little generous but that should work and one is a little smaller than the other one and uh, but at the end it all should be all should come pretty much even you try to keep this part here very straight because the finished product will show it um, if you are a little bit, uh, you see like 
this way. So try to, the best way is to use your knife and tap it a little bit like this. And then you'll have a nice straight head when you cook it. We'll do the other one. And uh, see a little smaller. So we're going to use this one for a uh, demonstration today. We are going to put a piece of parchment paper. What you could do to make it easy is to put a little butter at the, at the bottom of it and that will glue it to your cookie sheets. Then you take your pastry, put it on your cookie sheet and uh, we're going to work a different thing here. We have to poke some holes here in order to keep the middle uh, not going up. So we just want the side to go up. So we're going to work on this one here. And also what you could do is some um, uh, design with your fork and uh, that will show well on the finished product. We could do a little square. What, uh, okay, and then we're gonna also only, and my eggs here, it's just a little thick, so what I'll do is put a little water in it and uh, mix it well. Of course, this, this is a lot, but you can only, you know, an egg is an egg, so. Here we go, so we just put, brush the dorure, on the dorure means, uh, doré is like giving some shiny or a nice color to your pastry. So you don't have to put any in the middle, uh, for two reasons then it doesn't matter because it's going to stay white and also it might clog the holes and and uh, the pastry will lift so we're going to put it in the oven and this is what I'm sh you know this is the fi final product here and we're going to put it in the oven at 400, 425 here in the mountain but if you're in Denver or in a low altitude probably 400 will be fine and that's what they suggest in the um, uh, the package that I, I bought, so a little bit more tidy, tidy up here, and we're ready to put it in the oven. The uh, pastry is baking at about we said what 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, so we have plenty of time to do the chantilly, which is the whipped cream. And we're going to prepare a kiwi, and we're also going to do the nappage in the, in the same time. So, I put a, my mixing bowl in the uh, refrigerator the last half hour to uh, do the, whip, the whipped cream. So, we have uh, six ounces of... Uh, of heavy whipped cream and two tablespoon of sugar. I'm just gonna put a little bit to start and then as I'm going it, as I'm doing it in the mixer, I'm gonna add some to it. Uh, so we're gonna do that first. We'll uh, do the napaz. So we have about Three tablespoon of uh, apricot preserve. It is the best thing if you can find what we call glaçage, then that would be best. But this will, will work well. Uh, you can use also other uh, preserve like a strawberry without the seeds. 
to make it more red. So I'll put about two tablespoons of water and we're gonna put it in the, um, on the stove and really simmer very slow and make a nice uh, glaçage. We'll sand it off, peel it, So this kiwi is a little uh, ripe, so it's a little more difficult, but it probably tastes great. It's not the best kiwi that I've seen. I mean, try to buy, but can really find an organic one here. And uh, we're gonna do some slice. And uh, that's gonna be the centerpiece of the uh, puff pastry. So we try to get the kind of even pieces. So here we go, we're gonna leave it on the dish here. And uh, the next thing will be the raspberries. And I think the, the chantilly, the whipped cream is ready. the uh, consistency because as you will see we have to make a nest in the in the puff pastry so it's a little more solid more you know uh, consistency to it what we're doing now is we're going to do the bed so we'll put a little bit at a time in the summer, and that's what my guests have, I never do it with uh, whipped cream, but the reason we do it with whipped cream during the holidays is just to get the effect of the color, like the snow here, and then the green and the, the red of the, uh, um, the red of the raspberries. So I guess, here we go, so the best tool is probably a nice little spatula like this one and you could be as generous as you want because you know if you like the whipped cream and a you know, nice uh, sweet pastry so you want to keep everything in the middle of the pastry and the best way is to just thin it out like this um, and yeah, I, I was talking about the summer pastry that I do. I use what we call creme pâtissière, which is um, in English um, a uh, filling, you know, like vanilla and eggs, uh, sugar. And uh, so in the summer with the peaches, it's really wonderful. You can also put some alcohol in in your if it's for adults you can put a little bit of uh, alcohol in your paste in your whipped cream or you creme chantilly uh, or your creme pâtissière in the summer definitely in the creme pâtissière you you might have a different way to do it uh, you may put the kiwis this way on the side and then the raspberry here in this puff pastry here I think I have enough room to do the uh, raspberry on the side and uh, so what we'll do is um, decide when we get to it if we're gonna put it on uh, half of the raspberry or the whole raspberry um, so you try to I mean if you want to work you could you could have used two kiwis here and put them a little more tight but here you know one kiwi just do very well and uh, voila so you have your first fruit on it you try to arrange it that to have a nice finish and then 
let's see if the raspberry the raspberry is going to be too much on one raspberry on both sides so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them probably in a, like so and uh, we're going to do um, the one side like this and in the meantime so we have the nappage the you know the gla the, the glaçage in still in the stove and I smell that the uh, we uh, I have to take it off the stove so I'll uh, finish this and take the uh, caramelized uh, finish off the stove and we'll go back to this All right, so here we go we have the uh, finish uh, putting of uh, laying our fruit on the uh, on the puff pastry uh, we tried to get a little bit of the white just again for the Christmas but don't worry about that because we're going to use some powdered sugar and we're going to have the effect of the snow and you can also prepare the puff pastry when you do two or four at the time you can also prepare them in advance and do the rest of the filling another day or it could stay uh, if you put it in a parchment paper with some aluminum foil you could keep it as long as two or three weeks in in your pantry um, so now I'm gonna get the the glaçage the uh, finished product uh, we called it the, the glaze and uh, so I'm getting it should be ready in the stove it's a little hot right now as you see I've got a nice um, liquidy but still pretty solid uh, we got rid of all the little piece of uh, apricot and so you, you do it gently even if it's hot like this that's okay you just go on a side like this brush it very gently because you don't want to move the food and uh, but this is important because it's really will enhance see how uh, the color of the fruit and really makes it rich you know this is uh, the pastry you see in Paris in the uh, pastry shop on the on the river Seine over there but I'm from the Alps so that's a little different but in the Alps we do the same thing we use different fruit um, a lot of peaches in the summer cherries and uh, you could do it with baked apple too voila so I didn't put really any on the I just kept kept it on the fruit because I will do something else on the edge for the finishing touch so you're done with the glaçage with the voila and I'm gonna use this knife here just to make it just nice and crispier so and then this you can taste it mmm not bad very nice so got this one so you see makes things a little more presentable you take your puff pastry find a dish that will fit it this one I like this one here it works well and what we're going to do is we're going to do the effect of the snow now so to do so you use a long knife or a spatula and you know just as close as you can to the fruit without touching it you will just put your powdered sugar and of course you can you're gonna put it on the dish too and that's a little a little uh, more uh, I'm uh, right-handed so let's see if I can do a backhand here um, here we go so just as you know you can do that with a spoon also I mean 
but this little tool here is pretty nice. You finish it, protect your pastry, just do the snow all around, and voila for this part. Now, your pastry is done, but if you want, you can add some of the raspberries around, and uh, since you have a little more, and also I have a little more of the nappage, the glaze, so what we're going to do is just and add a little bit of water to make it a little more liquid, so we just add a little bit of a touch here, just make it a little more festive, like gold, voila. So, this is the dish, and I think that will be a great little dessert that will replace the uh, Bûche de Noël. I, I'm pretty happy. I can't wait to have a bite of it, and I enjoy spending the time with you and making this great dessert for Christmas or for the holidays. We wish, John and I are going to wish you a wonderful holidays season, safe, and hopefully we'll see you at the end next summer and we can enjoy our nice chambosa and the rosé. Uh, we have a wonderful crop this year and the rosé and the white wine is going to be wonderful. And then we also, the 2010 Chambosa will probably pair well with the, anything you serve during the holidays. Thank you again and à bientôt.